Welcome to Nyak Takis. My name is Mrs. Ramla, and this video is on the section animal tissues. And this video is a theory video on epithelium. Now, why did I choose only certain tissues to do videos? Now, epithelium is a tissue that you will be tested on for the next three years in grade 10, 11, and 12. So that's why I chose to do a video on epithelium. Right. Now, I've also put the notes here so that as I'm explaining, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, the first tissue is squamous epithelium. Now, squamous epithelium is one of the most important epithelium. You will discuss squamous epithelium in grade 10, 11, and 12. Now, if you look at the diagrams of squamous epithelium, you can see this is a surface view of the tissue and this is a longitudinal section. Now, you can see that these cells are regular shaped, these cells are tightly packed, and of course, these cells are living. Now, when it comes to epithelium, there are two types of epithelium, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. Now, what we're going to be talking about in the next four tissues are simple epithelium. Now, simple epithelium is epithelium that's made up of a single layer. Stratified epithelium is made up of many layers. So, this is a simple epithelium. It's a single layer of cells. Now, you can see there's the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and what all epithelium have in common is a basement membrane, as you can see here. And the basement membrane is what attaches the tissue to the different structures and the organs. Now, you must know where these tissues are found. You must be able to identify the tissue and the functions in each position. Now, in the lining of your mouth, meaning your cheek cells, is made up of squamous epithelium. Your blood vessels are made up of, aligned with squamous epithelium. Your heart also has a lining of the squamous epithelium, as well as the lungs, which is made up of air sacs, which are called alveoli. The alveoli is lined with a single layer of squamous epithelium, and as well as the outer layer of your skin. Now, very, very important when it comes to this tissue. This tissue is thin and flat. So the reason why this tissue is found in thin and flat, and it's found in your blood vessels and your lungs, is actually to allow for faster diffusion. Now in your blood vessels, the gases must diffuse out faster and if the tissue is thin and flat, diffusion can take place faster. As well as in the lungs, in the alveolus, you are going to learn next year in grade 11 that alveolus is the main gases exchange surface area and for gases, diffused, for gases to be able to diffuse quickly into the alveolus and out, that alveolus has to have a single layer of cells which are thin and flat so it must have squamous epithelium so that is now the functions of the squamous epithelium in the blood vessels and the lungs very important now in the outer layer of your skin any tissue on the outer layer anything on the outside is there for protection so because the squamous epithelium is found on the outer layer of your skin it will protect all the underlying tissues as you can see in the picture here these cells are tightly packed. There's a cement substance that sticks that sticks the cells together. And the cells have to be tightly packed to be able to reduce friction. Now, what else takes place in the blood vessels besides diffusion of gases? We know the blood vessels also carry nutrients, water. So if, again, if the blood vessel is lined with a single layer of cells, the nutrients and the water can move out faster. Now, this is a very important tissue. Please, can my advice to you is please make sure you know this tissue very well. Right. Let's go down to the next question, tissue. Cuboidal, cuboidal, sorry, cuboidal epithelium. From its name, cuboidal, cube-shaped. You can see that this tissue is cube-shaped. It has a round nucleus in the center. Okay. There's the basement membrane, we know. And then this tissue can also have goblet cells. And we know goblet cells secrete mucus. Now, this tissue is found in two places, in glands and the kidney. Now you're going to learn in matric that glands secrete hormones. Certain glands can secrete certain secretions, like a sweat gland will secrete sweat. So if this tissue is found in glands, you must say secretion. That will, that's what the function is. Just say secretion. You don't know more about it, you'll learn more about it in matric. And secretion means to rele release useful substances. All right. When this tissue is found in the kidney, you learned in grade 9 that the kidney plays a role in excretion. Again, you learn more about this in grade 11. So for now, you must just know that this tissue 
it has a basement membrane as all epithelium is cube shaped, has a round nucleus, is tightly packed. When found in the glands, plays a role in secretion. When found in kidneys, plays a role in excretion. And secretion means to release useful substances and excretion means to remove metabolic waste. Right, that's cuboidal epithelium. Columnar epithelium. If you look at the picture here now, Columns. You can see that this tissue is made up of columns. You can see it has a nucleus. It's tightly packed. And there you go again. There's your basement membrane. Now, this tissue is found lining the stomach, the small intestine, and certain sense organs like your nose and your ears. Now, lining your stomach, there is also in these cells goblet cells that secrete mucus. And that mucus will line your stomach to prevent the acid and the enzymes from digesting the cells the epithelial cells in the stomach. It will also prevent the food from rubbing up, rubbing up against the stomach wall and the cells. So it prevents abrasion of the epithelium, right? You're going to learn in grade 11 that the small intestine is lined with the columnar epithelium, a single layer, so nutrients can be absorbed faster in the small intestine and then in the nose and the ears. Any chemical substance has to dissolve in the nose, in the mucus first for you to be able to smell. And then also you will find certain cell, um, columnar epithelium in your ear as well for sensation. So this is now columnar epithelium. Ciliated columnar epithelium. Now you can see it's the columnar epithelium. You can see the basement membrane here. You can see the nucleus here. And then there's your cilia. Your cilia is hair-like structures. This tissue is one of the most favorite tissues that teachers love to ask. Now, cilia is like hair, is hair-like structures, like I mentioned. And the cilia is always sway and move in a certain direction. So this tissue will be found in the nasal cavities, ventricles in the brain, in your ear passages, in the fallopian tubes, and in the sperm ducts. Now, you can see that this tissue is column-shaped, has cilia on the one end, and the cilia move. There's your basement membrane again, and there's the nucleus. Now, you must be able to tell what the function of this tissue is in each part. Now, firstly, in the nasal cavities, we know that there's dust and foreign particles. And in the nasal cavities, there's also goblet cells. So, the hairs, the hair-like cilia, or the hair-like structures, which is the cilia, always move to prevent the dust and foreign particles from entering deep in the air passages. And then the goblet cells, these... Um, columnar epithelium also have goblet cells which will secrete mucus which will collect and gather the dust and the foreign particles. So that's the function in the nasal cavities. In the ventricles in the brain you have a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. The hairs always move to equally distribute the cerebrospinal fluid around the brain and this fluid protects the brain. In the ear passages you have obviously um, the hairs that also trap dust insects, foreign particles, and prevents it from entering in the, the inner ear and the middle ear, which can prevent you from hearing, can impede sound waves, so you won't be able to hear. Fallopian tubes, we all know, allows for the ovum or the egg or the embryo to move into the uterus or out of the female's body. And in the sperm duct, the cilia moves the sperm in the male's body. This is a very nice tissue. Make sure you know this. Most teachers love to ask this tissue. Right. And the last tissue now. Now, the four tissue that we've just done, that's the simple epithelium. They were all just a single layer. Now we're moving on to stratified squamous epithelium. And stratified means many layers. And as you can see, it is squamous epithelium, but it's many layers. Where is this tissue found? In the epidermis of the skin. So you can see it's many layers. And these cells, you can see, are actively dividing. Now, in the skin, the cells actively divide. And as they get pushed to the top, the cells get flattened. And eventually, the cells will get covered with keratin. And the outer layer of your cells will actually die. Okay. And the reason for that is the outer layer of your cells become hardened with keratin to allow for protection of all the inner layers of the cells in the skin. Okay, so that was now your lesson on the squam, on the, sorry, on the epithelium. Please make sure you always save this video so that when you are 
in grade 11, when you're in grade 12, you can always come back to this epithelium. You will be encountering and coming across epithelium for the next three years. Right. Thank you for joining this video, joining me and watching this video on epithelium. Join me and watch all my other videos as well.